Hi. Now in this video, I want to discuss a typical kind of problem that you might be faced with where we've got a particle attached to a spring resting on a smooth horizontal table and we pull the particle to the side, release it and look at the motion that it performs. It's going to oscillate back and forth. So to demonstrate this, I've got this horizontal spring here with modulus of elasticity 5 newtons and natural length 0.5 meters. And it's attached to a particle here of mass 2 kilograms and the other end is attached to a fixed wall. And the particle rests in equilibrium at the moment on this smooth table and then it's pulled to the side a distance of 0.2 meters and released. And as I say, we're going to discuss the motion of this particle. Now the first thing I'd want to do is draw a diagram. So draw a diagram below the one that we've got already. So mark on the table here and we've got our wall here. And the particle is pulled to the side, we're told, 0.2 meters. So let's say we take it from here, pull it to the end of the table, like that, okay? We're told it's released from rest, so we'll just mark that in, and that's going to have a speed of 0 meters per second. Now, I next project down from this particle here in its equilibrium position. This is an important line. I'll label it as O or zero. And this length here is important to us. We know it's the natural length. It's 0.5 meters. So I'll just put that in as 0.5 meters, the natural length then from there to there, okay? Next, I'm going to put the particle to the right of this dotted line here. Let's say it's just in this general position at some time, okay? This time here, by the way, was when t equals zero. So I'll just mark that in as t equals zero. So this is at some other time greater than zero. And the particle then is attached to the spring. I'll just draw it in as a curly line. Obviously, you don't have to do that. You could keep it just straight. It's up to you. So that the distance from O is X. And this is going to be the positive sense of X. If it's on the other side, X will be negative. And I always feel it's a good idea to draw your general position on the side where X is positive. It's also well worth marking in this maximum distance that we pulled the particle to. It's going to be 0.2 meters, as we're told. This is not drawn to scale, but this distance then becomes what we call the amplitude, the maximum distance. I'll call it A. That's the standard letter we have for amplitude. So that amplitude then is 0.2 meters. That's from there all the way back to O. Now the other thing I haven't marked on, the particle, is the forces acting on it. So there's going to be a tension acting back towards O. As soon as we pull it to the right, it's going to be want to be pulled back towards O by a tension. So I mark a tension in there. Hope you can see that. That's going to be T, T Newtons. There'll also be the weight, so I'll mark that in. Mass is 2 kilograms, so that's going to be 2 G Newtons. And there'll also be a reaction from the surface of the table here. We'll call that R Newtons. It's a smooth table, so there's no friction. Now, the other thing I haven't marked on is the acceleration of the particle. And this is the place where I find a lot of people trip up. Always mark your acceleration in the direction of X increasing. So I've taken the right here 
to be the positive sense of x increasing. So mark the acceleration in towards the right here. That's going to be x double dot. OK, so take care over that. So I feel we've got everything now that we need. So we just need to look at building up some equations. And one of the equations that you tend to use in questions like this is the equation of motion. That is, if we resolve in the direction of the acceleration, that's to the right, OK? I'd always encourage you to do that. Resolve in the direction of acceleration. So we've got the overall force equals mass times acceleration. Well, we've got negative t here acting on the particle in the opposite sense to what we've got here. That's the only force we need to consider because obviously these two are perpendicular. And this is equal to the mass, which we know is of 2 kilograms, times the acceleration, which will be x double dot. And what I'll do is label that equation 1. We'll be coming back to that one again later. Now, another equation that we always use in problems like this is consider Hooke's Law. So if I just put a little subtitle here, by Hooke's Law, I'm assuming that you're familiar with this method. That is that the tension in a spring is equal to the modulus of elasticity, which is given by lambda, over the natural length multiplied by the extension x. So if I apply that here, we've got that the tension t, so we've got therefore t equals the modulus of elasticity, which is 5 newtons, so we put that's 5. It's divided by the natural length, which was 0.5 meters, and it's multiplied by the extension x. So 5 divided by 0.5 gives us 10, so we've got a tension t of 10x. Okay, and I'll label this equation number 2. So these two equations tend to be very common in problems like this. Now what we do next is we would generally substitute equation 2 into equation 1. So I'll just put up here sub equation 2 into equation 1. You'll see what happens when we do this. We therefore have minus t, so it's going to be minus 10x is equal to 2 x double dot, twice the acceleration. And if I divide both sides by 2 and make the acceleration x double dot the subject, I therefore have x double dot equals minus 5x. And does this look familiar? Well, it's the general form of the equation for simple harmonic motion. Remember that the form for simple harmonic motion was that the acceleration was equal to minus omega squared x, where omega squared was a constant. We had the acceleration was directly proportional to the displacement, but acts towards the center of oscillation, hence the negative sign. So, if we're ever asked to prove that motion is simple harmonic, we've got to be able to develop an equation like this and show that it's in this form. So I've arrived at that. So I could say, therefore, simple harmonic motion as x double dot equals minus omega squared x, where omega must be equal to well, omega squared is 5, so omega must be the root of 5. And once you've worked out omega, that opens up so much more in the way of other equations. For instance, we should know the period of oscillation, the time it takes for the particle to go backwards and forwards to the same place. Remember the formula for the period 
of oscillation. Let's just put this in again as an intro. Okay, period of oscillation. That's given by 2 pi divided by omega. So in this example, that period of oscillation is going to be 2 pi divided by root 5. I'll leave it up to you to just work that out in your calculator. And that will be measured in seconds. Another formula that's used in simple harmonic motion, which I showed you in an earlier video, is this one relating the speed of the particle. It was v squared equals omega squared and then it was a squared, the amplitude squared, minus x squared, the displacement of the particle from our center point O. And with this equation, now that we've got omega, we know a, a was 0 0.2 meters, then we can work out the speed at any displacement x. Now one common problem is to work out the maximum speed. And that maximum speed is going to occur when x equals 0. So let's just follow that one up. Let's say the maximum speed, that's going to be when x equals 0. And if we put that in there, we've got v max. Well, that's going to be equal to the square root of all of this. So it's going to be the square root of, and we've got omega squared. Well, if I square root 5, that's just going to be 5. And then it's going to be multiplied by a squared. That's 0 0.2 squared. Remember, x is 0, so that's all we've got. And if you work this out, you'll find it comes to 0 0.447 and so on. And that would be measured in meters per second. And you could round it to any accuracy that you want. Now I want to show you the use of another formula that we've discussed earlier in simple harmonic motion. And that was the displacement x was always equal to either a sine omega t or a cos omega t. And for a problem like this where when t equals 0, it started at its maximum amplitude. That formula was a cosine of omega t. So do check that out, because when t equals 0, we end up with a cosine of 0, which is 1. So x equals a, that amplitude. Now, with this formula, we know omega, we know a. Then we can work out the displacement x at any particular time. So let's say we choose when t equals 2. See what we get after 2 seconds. So substituting x equals 2 into here along with a and omega, you find that we therefore have x equals the amplitude, which is 0.2, times the cosine of omega, which is root 5, times the 2. Now if you work this out, take care because you must be in radians mode on your calculator. But if you work that out, you'll find you get a negative answer. That's minus 0 0.047 and so on. So how do we interpret this? Well, it's a negative answer, so it's telling us that the particle must be on the left hand side of O. And we can see that its distance away from O will be roughly 5 centimeters. So we can just say um, that therefore the position of the particle, if I can just squeeze this in here, it's approximately 5 centimeters to the left okay, of O. So I hope you can see that. So these formulas that we've been using here, very important. Remember the one for simple harmonic motion, the acceleration is equal to minus omega squared x, period of oscillation, 2 pi over omega. This one here that looks at the speed, 
b squared equals omega squared a squared minus x squared and take care over this one the displacement x in this type of example is equal to a cos omega t. So I hope this gives you some idea anyway on how to go about handling questions like this, the equations we use and the methods that we use. Okay?